Okay, good morning. We're getting closer to the end of Revelation. This morning, uh, Jim let me know that next week we will not be having class. Most of the staff has gone to NWCCD. Um, many won't be here and they'll be gone to uh, children's camp. So continue to pray for the staff and everybody there and the kids. So I know Eugene will be preaching at 10. I will be here supporting Eugene, but I will not be teaching. And that's next week. Today we're going to be talking about the judgment of the great white throne. And we're talking about Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. This is some of my favorite part. Makes the hair stand on my arms. So what's up with chapter 21? Well, here on earth, you and I have gone through various trials, life's challenges, and you continue to hold to him. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to our rewards. In Revelation chapter 21, We'll go into detail description of what it will be like, the measurements and everything, of what heaven will look like, that you and I, that our blessed hope reward will be there. It'll be worth it, the whole thing, what we've gone through, things we've faced maybe this week, maybe for many years <clears throat> in life. But this, in Revelation chapter 1, will make your reward worth it. And with that, let's go ahead and open prayer. Father, thank you this morning for the strength for this week. It's been a rough week. Um, buried my brother this week. It's been a challenge for me. I know he died a couple months ago, but the family and stuff coming together. It's been an emotional time. So we thank you for the strength that you give me to work through this process. Most importantly, Father, again, your words, all of God's word, we hang on to your words as we face the things in our life. And we trust that you will keep your word and your rewards and heaven will be there after us here on earth. And you'll bring the new Jerusalem. And at one point you will bring the church home. And all things that we've taught so far in Revelation. And I pray that people will get busy unpacking it let it pierce their heart and hold on to you. Pray for the service this morning, the message, the worship. We give it all to you. In your precious name, amen. <clears throat> Judgment for the great white throne. And on our picture, it's here on our chart. It's at this point right here. <coughs> After the tribulation has been completed, we see the scroll here that had been opened up during the po portion of tribulation. You and I are right now in the church age back here. The rapture occurs. We are all the way to this point the great white throne judgment. John the writer it'll be like 36, 37 weeks now that we've gone on here teaching but if you notice I haven't talked about the book of Daniel at all
There's a lot of comparisons between the book of Daniel and Revelation when you put them side by side. The book of Daniel, the book of, some of the book of Isaiah, as I could put about, it would be overwhelming, but many of the books in the Old Testament give us correlating messages that you see in Revelation. And it's loud and clear. that he has put everything in his word for us to understand, to live by, and inspire us. <coughs> it says, John saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, who, who's him? Jesus. from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. If you notice, the earth and the heaven, which heaven are we talking about? When we have a discussion in the Bible, there's, we talk about three different heavens. People say, James, now wait a minute. You're talking about a different religion. No, no, no. There's three descriptions of heaven in the Bible. For the first, the word heaven is used for, if we were to go outside and look up into the stars into the sky, that's one considered one heaven, the sky. Firmament, sky, heaven, I'll use for that. <clears throat> that blue sky we see. The second heaven would be the moon, the stars. The Bible refers to that also as the heavens. So don't let other religions distract you and giving you a lot of stuff about what the three heavens mean celestial heavens and all that stuff. There's a lot, a lot of different names for heaven that other religions will try to lead you astray and get you distracted by. And the third heaven is what we think about is heaven where Jesus is on the throne. First one, simply the blue sky is talking about. The secondly, the stars, sun, moon, and the third is where Christ is on the throne. Angelina, the Bible says that the moon, the sun, the stars. So she has a good question. She said, Angelina said, like when you think about witchcraft and palm reading and they all point to the moon and the stars and tarot cards and all that kind of stuff. Why do they use those things? It says for the same reason that Satan, if you look back here, and you look at the Antichrist and the beast, they try to mimic who? Jesus. Jesus dies on the cross, the Antichrist will suffer a mortal wound and survive. He tries to copy what Christ did to try to cause confusion to you and I. To try to distract us from his truth. So that's basically the answer. Why do they use all the thing about the stars and the sun and and why why is the gay movement using the, the rainbow as a flag and stuff. <clears throat> but if you analyze carefully the whole pride movement and the flag, there's one color missing. Those, check for yourself and you'll see it. The rainbow 
the Lord set the colors, but the rainbow doesn't have, the pride flag does, is missing one color. Check for yourself and find out what that is. Don't just take my word for it. I'm a colorblind man. So I'm letting you find out for yourself. So just put that out there for yourself. Again, and so to answer your question is Satan loves the day he was kicked out of the guard, kicked out of heaven. He has worked ever since to cause distraction. But I'm curious. Oh, Angelina says, I'm curious, God made the angels and did they have that desire to rebel or how Satan got that desire? I'm going to look for that answer. I don't know. But a simple answer right now is think about greed and power and attention and fame. He's bound for a thousand years. <clears throat> He's going to end up in the And he's going to end up being bound eternally for forever. Greed, desire, power, and all that stuff. That's the only answer I could give. Betsy, you have a question. I like Betsy's question. Um, let's back up a minute. I want to clarify about the throne. The church age here, before the rapture, God is on the throne. Jesus is seated at the right hand. So my question back to you is why? Why is Jesus seated on the right hand of the Father? Before I answer, Betsy, anybody else have? So Linda says authority. <clears throat> you know, we've talked about rank and things like that and authority in and, and heaven, but you and I are going to see that when we come back on earth. I'm working right now on earth to set a rank, but hold that thought for later. Why? And Linda said authority. God is on a throne, Jesus is on the right hand. <clears throat> Why? <clears throat> Forgive sins, yeah, okay. Jesus died on the cross. Surprised people didn't catch it, but I apologize. God is on the throne, right, at that time, at this time. Jesus is on the right hand. He is waiting. He is sitting there waiting. Remember, it says Jesus does not know when the rapture is going to happen. So why is he on the right hand? Linda made the comment of authority. Rank, that's fine. And he's just sitting there waiting for that day that he can come again and bring his church home. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting really emotional of this part. The rapture occurs, now we're in heaven. Don't misunderstand me, rank is important, but Jesus, he is no more on the right hand. In heaven, he is sitting on the throne. 
And who will be the light? The moon, the sun, and the stars, and that's Jesus. We don't need a church in heaven because he is the, the light of the church. We think about the Trinity, the three in one. And we try to get into these discussions of separating them and moving them around and all this stuff. I get it. It's our fleshly nature. But hopefully, you will catch that. Don't get me wrong, he's busy, but he's, he's in a, a place that he's waiting for the... I'll give you another example. Um, many of you know Billy Graham. Remember Billy Graham, famous preacher. He had run many, run his organization many years until he was in his 90s. When he passed away, who took his place? The son. Now, it's not an exact comparison. Sort of a similar thing. Jesus has a duty. And he'll be on that throne one day in the future there, in heaven, where you and I will live for eternity. I hope that answers your question. <clears throat> right, Jesus is waiting for his command to go to bring his church home. which will happen in a twinkling of an eye, he'll come. He's not even going to touch the earth. Later he touches on earth and is returned later, but for the rapture, no. The sounding of the trumpet, he comes, right, Betsy. And those who are de dead in Christ will be risen first. <coughs> those who are dead in Christ, those are Christians meaning you must be a Christian to go home first. There are going to be a lot of people that die, Christians that die before the rapture occurs. They're dead in Christ. They'll, they'll rise first and be taken. But we are, are left, we'll then meet them up in the air, in the sky. But it's going to happen so fast. I mean, a twinkling of an eye. Lynn, you have a question. Rapture. Lynn asked me a question in the rapture. God will command Christ to go. Jesus will go. God will let him know when to go. God's the only one to know the time and when to send the Son. I hope that's clear. Stan, you had a question. About Jesus sitting on our right hand. Jesus on earth <clears throat> with 11 disciples and they questioning him. They were curious about the time when and Jesus made the comment, only my Father in heaven knows. And like Linda said recently, authority if you notice the 12 disciples, remember, maybe Jim or Eugene can help me, whatever, but they were discussing about Mother was trying to manipulate Jesus to get one of them to sit on the right hand of Christ. I don't remember now, but <laughs> he's trying to interpret and answer a question. Point is, as Jesus responded, 
Don't ask me. It's not my decision. It's the Father's decision. <clears throat> Jesus was showing his respect and submitting to the authority of the Father. To clarify, he is waiting to be sent in the twinkling of an eye to bring you and I home. And that's our blessed hope. So a lot of Three and one, the Trinity. God is on the throne, God the Father. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is here with us. <coughs> the Spirit was sent after Jesus ascended to heaven. The Holy Spirit is here with us when we preach, when we teach, when we encourage. It convicts us. It lets us know. It teaches us the Word of God. It pierces our hearts. Jim always prays that, prays that the word pierces our hearts. And where does that come from? The Holy Spirit. Hopefully that clarifies it. Three persons, one God, called the Trinity. Angelina, after 40 days, he ascended. Will he come back on earth from where he ascended or? Okay, a couple of different questions there. And Jim's, Angelina said, when Jesus died, where was he when he was buried? Jerusalem, okay, in that area. And he ascended, remember that. When he ascended to heaven, he went up in the sky and it says, Jesus will come in a twinkling of an eye. <clears throat> and it says, all earth, or dead in Christ, will rise first. <clears throat> you know, all around the earth, body, soul, both. But those who remain in Christ will then be taken in the twinkling of an eye. Some say, well, James, this and that, whatever. My answer is, please don't ask me. All I can tell you is what the Bible says. In the twinkling of an eye. What does that tell me? It's going to be so fast, you're not going to realize it. Three weeks ago, I was riding my motorcycle, enjoying life, cruising along, when all of a sudden I was struck. And I felt like it was in slow motion. You know, it's like a freeze frame. You know how that happens, but it just hits and boom, everything happens so fast. What just happened? Twinkling of an eye. Maybe it'll be somewhere, I don't know. Say, James, you're crazy, and it's a crazy example, and twinkling eye is so fast. I don't have words to explain it. <clears throat> I'm just going to trust. I believe what I teach. It's so powerful. There's the one thing we're talking about. It ha everything happens so fast when I get hit with, on a motorcycle. But I hold on to him. And I'm all cut up and everything, but I said, okay, Lord, I'm still alive. Obviously, I have, you have another plan for me. I don't know what it is, but thank you, I'm still here. That was my first thought. My body was shaking. The adrenaline rush had happened. People were coming, trying to give me water and stuff, and I was like... It's an example of how quickly things can happen. Hopefully now, 
Are we good? Let's move on. Did I answer your question? I, okay. Down row. In the beginning is the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Meaning, Jesus himself was God. I agree. Three and one. The Word was God. Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, whatever. Some people just question it or puzzle and all this stuff. That's all I ask you is to hold on. <clears throat> when we get to heaven in the rapture, my favorite part is going to be like you. I want to know some answers to a lot of these questions. So let's continue reading. Earth and a heaven fled away. Meaning this earth and the heaven, the sky which we see, as we know it, will be gone. I hope that's clear. And there was no place found for them. <clears throat> gone. Now this is important. And I saw the dead. No matter you're famous or not famous, no matter who you are, all the dead and great, meaning famous, small, not famous, whatever. Rich, poor, famous, not famous, whatever. That's kind of the picture you're saying. Stand before God. Remember we use the term dead in Christ, talking about dead Christians. You and I have Christ. We're raptured. You will go home first. If you pass, if you, if you die before Christ comes again, the rapture. The point is, those who die without Christ, whether it's before the rapture, the, during the tribulation, when we get to this point, now they're facing God. Therefore, remember the thousand year reign. Satan was loosed for a short season. Remember that? <clears throat> I mean, life still went on during a thousand years and people were born and stuff. Satan now is loose for a short period of time to try to draw those people. Remember, it said that people were counted to the sands of the sea. It means there were a lot of people over a thousand years that had decided to follow Satan at that point. And now those people will fa face this judgment. They think, oh, you know, So now those people will be left for the judgment. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Judged by your works, your life, and the dead were judged. Those who do not know Christ are going to be judged here. Out of the things written in, that were written in the book. A lot of people would ask me about where the video was from last week. I was so busy I didn't know. The video didn't get posted. This morning I was texting Jim, but it's important that thousand year reign, there will be conse consequences to be had for people. Satan's favorite tool is to get us to procrastinate. 
worry about tomorrow, not worry about it tomorrow, not worry about the tribulation. I've seen, I've seen what James is teaching and stuff, and I can go through the thousand year reign. I can, I can go through tribulation. I can fake it through the thousand years, whatever. Satan bound, I'm good. Some people have had those discussions. Wow. Strange thought process. Jesus' word is very clear for us. We cannot escape judgment. We have a divine appointment. I laughed this week. I was using as an example of my wife. She knows I tend to get real busy and, and forgetful about things. I'm doing different things. I'm putting a new cedar deck on my house and I'm working on it and stuff. And I had an appointment Friday. I had a doctor's appointment to follow up on the motorcycle situation. My wife kept reminding me, reminding me, reminding me. Close to 10 minutes before the appointment, guess where I was? I had forgot all about it. <coughs> Took off. I had one minute left. I said, yep, that's my husband. That's what he does. I'm guilty of that. I had an appointment with a doctor. For you and I to skip that, but we have an appointment to stand before the great, great judgment. Now, one soul is going to miss it. And when you read, you'll see this again an appointment to be judged. What happens to each of us? If you have Christ, We have nothing to worry about. <clears throat> that appointment is going to be an easy appointment in which we enter and Christ will be like a lawyer that comes alongside of us and his blood will cover our sins. White as snow. He'll be our advocate before the judgment. And the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works. <clears throat> we talk about rank before and position and a place of authority where you will be when we come back with Christ and the horses. We'll come back to reign it says, means we will be busy doing his business in his kingdom here on earth, Jerusalem. Your position in that is determined by your works of your life. So that seems confusing, but maybe later when I, if I have time and I'm done with Revelation, I can expand upon that scripture. The point being, Jim and Eugene and other people preach. Don't just come to church as a check mark. Jim has said it many times. When you come in just to check check a box, you need to be you need to be taking time with Christ. Pray and seek his kingdom, <clears throat> what he is calling you to do. Those actions will determine your placement and rank in heaven. You think of the military and all the different ranks, stripes and bars and stuff. It's the ranks. I know people kind of get interested in that. We can talk about that some other time. But don't just sit there, uh, remember, 
give you another example. He says, don't store your, don't store your treasures here on earth. <clears throat> People say, oh, James, you have a motorcycle, you have a house, you have a car, you have a truck, you have, yep, guilty of that. I got my Dodge out there, but if you ask me, which is my favorite of those things, that car, my motorcycle, and all that stuff, those things that I enjoy riding and even got hurt on, <clears throat> found out that earthly things can hurt us. But those things I can't bring with me to heaven. I thank the Lord that I'm able to enjoy those things. I took my brother and my father for a ride. And you see the smile on their face riding in that old car. It was worth it to me. I enjoyed, it, enjoyed doing those things for them. Point is, we need to be active in our church, involved in our missionary, missions. You see, he's watching of where your heart is, where your motivation is. Don't store treasures. I'm sorry. Don't store treasures on earth, where moth and rust can destroy. And you look at that seventy dart. You look up close, really deeply close to that car, and you can begin to see where the rust spots are on it. And I left it in there 50 years, it would probably be rust right away. Store your treasures in heaven. <clears throat> Careful about check, trying to check boxes. So this is in the sea gave up their dead which were in it and death. This is Titanic. <laughs> so, yep. I've got two cousins <clears throat> that were in the Navy. They passed away. I heard something recently here. I got two cousins in the Navy. And they had their bodies, ashes put in a cannon. When they died, they put their ashes in a cannon and shot them out to sea. Uh, okay, well that's interesting, I learned something. That's something, a military honor of something. Remember, the sea holds many people who have passed away too, not just the earth. Jim used to use an example of the Titanic. Point is, there's no place you can hide to avoid him, his judgment. That's why it says heaven and earth will pass away. can't go somewhere, my spirit can't go. Once I'm dead, the spirit, flesh will all be judged. <clears throat> so those Oh, talk about haunted house and spirits and things like that. Those are demonic spirits. Not good spirits. People say, oh, I saw my mom come to me in a spirit and my dad and all this stuff. They say, well, wait a minute. Satan can mimic any one of our family members. The Bible says, be careful. Do not be talking with the dead, dead spirits. Do not be fascinated with those things. A little off the point again, but be careful. <clears throat> See, so give up dead which were in it. Hell delivered up the dead which were in it. Everything. 
no one was left. <clears throat> and they were judged every man according to their works. Emphasize again, no one, no matter who you are, If you're reading tarot cards or whatever other stuff, no one is going to miss a judgment. You can't escape the judgment. And now the final. Yes, even Satan will face judgment. Yes, he's faced it here. They've all been tossed into the lake of fire. We talked about that last week. So after he was loose for a thousand years and then lost and tossed away. Heavenly angels who are already in heaven, they've already, it's already happened back here. Angels with Jesus who've been ministering with him all this time, they've already faced a judgment. Remember, if we back up, when Satan gets kicked out of heaven, a third of the angels, two thirds remain with Christ. They didn't join Satan. They were tossed. But they made a choice to stay in heaven. That was their decision. And you and I today have that decision here now. So we make a choice. They made a choice to leave or stay with Satan. To leave or stay with God, I mean. So those angels have been already judged. So let's quickly read it here. This is soon the final thing here. It says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And who's already there? The Antichrist, the beast, Satan are already all there. Those who accepted the mark of the beast those who knew Christ are not. And this is the second death. Remember I mentioned a few times the Bible makes it clear what the second death is. And this is the second death. The second death, you and I, we avoid it by having Christ. No second death for those who know Christ and are in heaven. And then it says, we're talking about those who yet accept Christ. Whoever was not found written in the book of life, having yet accepted Christ, The book of life's. Some say, hey, James, they have one, two, three, four books. How many books are we talking about here? But the most important book is going to be the book of life. I'll try to give you an example. If I collect I have a furnace over here. A couple of years ago, I went to mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's like molten metal when you melt molten metal and you skim off the dross and the impurities of things. <clears throat> when he judges your works, you and I, including me, some of those works that we do are not going to make it. and They will be destroyed, but we will still have Christ. And he purifies us. My name has been recorded in the book of life, but my judgment of my works, some will be destroyed, but I will still get into heaven. I know it's a little hard of a picture to understand. Those that know Christ will make it, but you will still be judged. Your works will be judged. Whose ever name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you haven't known Christ yet, I'll try to use myself as an example again and again and again. I'm human. I will fail you. That's why I have to be careful every time I stand here. I will face the judgment of my works. So my time is gone, so I'm going to close. And next week we'll talk. Next week you hold. No Sunday school next week. We'll come back in two weeks after camp. So let's close in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we thank you again. Revelation chapter 20 is clear to us that we cannot escape a judgment. Help us every person to examine our own lives and our hearts and our minds, our thoughts. We give it all up to you Help us to examine our actions to make sure that we are ready to face the judgment of our works. We cannot judge ourselves. There are people that claim to know Christ, but the works show other. But our works will be judged. Help us remember that as we examine ourselves and ready to face you. Anoint the message today, the worship. We give everything to you in your precious name. Amen. Amen.